Okay, Chris, Kevin Lee uh, sent us a message this week, first of all. Uh, says, hi, Robbie. Uh, this tweet is actually related to episode 490. So this is last week, Chris uh, was watching the show. It says, a friend's PlayStation 3 had problems, and I ran DD Rescue. This is something you learned on the show last week, episode 490. Uh, her drive has got 27 errors, and he posted this screenshot. So thank you very much for that. That helps us. Uh, we're going to refer right back to that in just a, a moment's time here. Uh, carrying on with your, uh, your message there on Twitter, um, you said, I recommended her to replace the hard drive. Do you think that maybe that's the best option? Sasha, what do you think? I would say yes. I would say... Just go for it. Just replace repl the drive. Replace the drive. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. Do it. Get it one of those Kingston that's, that's solid what, state drives. Absolutely get Do one that. of those Kingston, Kingston solid state drives. Why? What okay. would you say? I would investigate just a little bit further. <laughs> Okay, because here's the thing, Chris. We need to understand that errors do not necessarily mean failure, okay? Uh, hard drives, over the course of their lifespan, sometimes they will encounter bad sectors and things like that. Let's refer back to your comment where you said that your scan using DD Rescue found 27 errors. So let's think about the process of running DD Rescue and what that means. Please refer back, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I know Chris is, uh, but if you're watching this and you haven't seen it, go back to episode 490 mm -hmm. uh, of Category 5 Technology TV. It's going to teach you all about this. Um, but DD Rescue is it's trying to do a data recovery copy of your hard drive to an image file or another hard drive. Mm -hmm. So... If you get 27 errors in the process, it's going, it basically means 27 times I was trying to copy this block of data, which by default is very small, about 500 kilobytes. Um, uh, so unless you specify a larger size, and this is why I didn't show you to make a larger size, which would be faster, but because we're working with drives that we assume are probably prob problematic, we're going to work with smaller uh, block sizes. So as it's copying, it says 27 times I had trouble copying that. So there's a couple things here. First of all, you, you know that there's some data loss, okay? We're going to look at how much in just a second. Mm -hmm. um, as it's copying, okay, DD Rescue can try again. But what DD Rescue does is it says, oh, okay, I found a problem here. This could mean that the drive is going to fail. So let's move on. Mm -hmm. let's, let's really quickly skip over this and let's move on to the next sectors and let's keep going. Because it wants to get the most amount of data off of your hard drive as it possibly can before that drive fails because we're making the assumption that we might have a bad drive. Mm -hmm. So then you can run the scan again using your log file or you can set it up to loop back and uh, this is through the command line options so do a dash dash help to find out about those uh, or read the man pages and what it will do then is it will focus in on those 27 errors so think right. these are errors these are not bad sectors okay? okay remember the difference there so it's not saying that these are bad parts of the drive it's saying i encountered an error at that point while i was copying so by going back over it again dd rescue may say oh okay now that we've taken a bit more time i've been able to get a couple more of those blocks oh, okay. so all of a sudden you're going to see that the error count goes down Right. Because again, it's not referring to bad sectors, it's referring to a problem during the rescue process. Right. Which is going to decrease as it is it able to go more. back over those. Mm -hmm. So let's look back at Chris's screenshot here. And Chris, one of the key things that we notice here is the error size. Okay, see that one just above your errors count? The error size is very small. This is a 250 gig disk. You can see that just to the left of, left of that, uh, or at least that's how much it had rescued and we see that it's finished. So we can assume that this is probably a 250 gig disk because it's not gonna be much, uh, much different than that because it's finished. So look at the error size, 124 kilobytes of 250 gigabytes. We're talking, what is that, 0.0003%, something like that. Mm -hmm. A very, Seems very small. small amount of data. So chances, you know, it is data loss. Go back, ha let it loop over it, try to get that data and put it in your image file so that you've got all of the data and you don't lose any. Is the drive failing? Is it, has it failed? Is it, is it problematic? Is it something that needs to be replaced or that you need to be concerned with? Certainly, the fact that there are errors on the drive means that it is, there is something up, mm -hmm. okay? 
if it's is it catastrophic that's what we want to determine so I'm gonna jump over to my Linux system here for you and uh, we're gonna get into our terminal so let's okay. do that make sure I bring up the right screen here we go okay so Chris, what we're going to do, and for all of you watching, uh, what we're going to learn here is how to determine if your hard drive is in fact failing, if there is something that uh, sector by sector copy um, can't see, because those are two different readings. What we want to look at is the smart status of our hard drive. You've probably right. heard the term. What it means is there's, there's data that's stored on your hard drive about your hard drive's status. So every time there's a problem with your drive, it's going to report it. And okay. the only way to, to see that is to use a tool that looks at your smart data. So let's get in here and let's try it. Let's, I'm going to just see if I have it installed. So smart, did I say installed? Because I'm typing smart, smart, <laughs> and I said in. In, I don't know what I said. <laughs> uh, we're going to see if I have it installed by <laughs> typing smart CTL. And it says, uh, obviously, I, I do have it installed because it's not giving me an error right. that the program is missing. Now, if it did give me an error that, there, that the program was missing, the, uh, the package that you want to install is, uh, so you would go sudo apt get update, enter your password. And then, once she's done, sudo apt-get install smart mon tools. That's what you're going to need, Chris and everyone else. Okay, and it says smart mon tools is already the newest version. That's what my system tells me. I've already got it in there. See that? Nice. Okay, so I'm good. So smart ctl-h is going to give you a little bit of information about how you use it. And uh, if you're in your terminal like this, you can scroll up. Cool. So what we need to do is we want to test or see the test results that are currently on that drive. Smart CTL dash dash all and then the drive, um, the drive dev assignment. We already know that because on episode 490, we used fdisk-l to determine that. Mm -hmm. um, let's do it again really, really quickly just so that we know. fdisk, no, I'm going to need sudo, pardon me, sudo fdisk-l. And we see that I only have SDA in my system. So SDA1 means partition, uh, the first partition. Two is the second and the third and the fifth and the sixth are actually the fourth and the fifth. <laughs> but we know that the drive, yeah, figure that one out. Uh, the drive itself is called slash dev slash SDA. So I'm going to type smart CTL dash dash all slash dev slash SDA and then hit enter. What does it tell us? Permission denied. Okay, why? Because I forgot sudo. Sudo, you have to be super user. There we go. Okay, so it gave me a big report here. And if I scroll up, you're going to see a couple of things. First of all, okay, oh no. It says pre-fail, 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 oh. pre-fail. Oh no, my drive is crashing. No. It's not, what? Don't freak out. Don't worry. You're okay. <laughs> You're okay. Why? Why? Because the raw value is zero, zero. That means it never happened. Okay. What is this? Yeah. This is the type. The type of this particular error, raw read error rate, is pre-fail. So... Oh. Okay, so you're just looking in the wrong spot. Mm. So if my raw value for this particular line in the table happens to be greater than zero, then we know that we have a pre-fail error on our drive. That means it's about to crash. You're right. about to lose all your data. It might be a year from now. It might be a day from now. But you need to replace this drive if you see any reasonable number of pre-fail errors a happening on that drive. A reasonable number, is that anything greater than zero? What's a reasonable Realistically, number? yeah. I mean, if you've got a pre-fail mm. error, you know that your drive is failing and we need to replace it. You know, you need to get rocking on, on that. Mm -hmm. If there's one or two or 50... Or 50? Yeah, I mean, if that's oh. the case, then, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd probably don't need to freak out right now <sighs> Don't all, like it's My it's failing. Okay, don't get me wrong. Don't get me because, wrong. Yeah. I I want you to yeah. replace it, but where you really like, I mean, you could still be running your computer and have fifty thousand pre-fail errors. Right. And you'll be, why is my computer so darn slow? 
Right. Because your hard drive, and you've seen this, where your hard drive gets really, really like choked it's up, really and all of a sudden, hard. yeah, and then yeah. your computer just seems to freeze up, yeah. and then all of a sudden it starts working again. I know. And so you think, oh, okay, it must have just been doing something. No, that's your hard drive pre-failing. That's the internal storage getting ready to crash, and that's called a pre-fail um, problem. So it's having trouble reading sectors of the drive, and that's right. that's critical. That is really mm -hmm. scary to yeah. me. Yeah, so as that starts happening, now remember that Chris has followed the instructions on episode 490, right. made an image of his friend's hard drive, so now on Chris's laptop, there is a full image, a copy of this hard drive. So you can go out and buy a new hard drive, and then image that back, and she's lost no data. That's cool. Well, 120 some odd kilobytes of data, nothing significant, but maybe if you loop over a couple more times, it'll, it'll get rid of it. So look at this list, okay? And you see how some of them say old age? Look at this. Oh my goodness. Ah, 649. Oh, it's only old age. It's not pre-fail. What it's saying is that, yeah, this is normal for a drive that's been in operation for some time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is not something that you necessarily have to be concerned with. That particular thing is telling me that it has been, that my hard drive has been powered on for a total of 649 hours. Okay, that's and not a big deal, is it? So mine is obviously a fairly new drive. Right. So the fact that it says old age is not saying I have an old age hard drive. So when you say, when you see pre-fail, it's not saying your drive is pre-failing. No, it's saying this particular line in this table is about old age. It's reporting on old age. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily. Well, saying, it's this like, is the, t the it's reporting yeah. on the number of hours that's been yeah. online. So when you see 649, I obviously do not have a hard drive that is of old age. Okay? Right. Now, if I saw something there that said 10 million, then yeah, my drive is pretty old. Yes. So you see how so the pre-fail stuff we're not really uh, we you know that's more critical. Right, and those are real hours. Stuff. Like, those are real 60-minute oh, yeah. hours. Like, if I turn off my laptop, it stops counting. Okay. Yeah, that's so real-time. that's time. super accurate. That's real-time. Okay, yeah. that's good. I do see, you know, some things here that I'm not sure what they are. Like, here's a pre-fail where I have 707, uh, but it says unknown attribute. So I'd have to look that up, which I will allow you to Google. Code number ID 170. What is it? Comment below. <laughs> Okay, Chris, and everyone else, I hope that, that gives you a little bit more insight. So, Chris, as you look at that report on your friend's hard drive, that's now when you can say, okay, well, I, yeah, okay, DD Rescue had some trouble copying some, some bits of data. Uh, running over it again may get that data off of there so that I've got a full image. What I really need to see now that I know that there are some errors with the drive is, is the drive in a pre-fail state? I can tell that by looking at those pre-fail lines and seeing if the raw value is a high number. And right. that's going to tell us that that drive is on its way out, if not already dead. <laughs> All right.